Hey YouTube, it's Penny. Sorry, I know it's been a while since I've recorded a video, um, but I'm going to share several things with you in this video that I've been shown over the course actually of the last several years and I'm um, going to try to tie them all together here for you. So back on December 18th of 2017, I saw a man standing under the water. He was dressed in a robe like a prophet of old might wear. He was holding a shofar with the tip sticking out of the water, kind of like a straw or a snorkel. I thought perhaps he was going to use the shofar as a means to breathe so that he would be able to survive the coming tsunami wave. However, I watched as a huge wave came that instead of using the shofar to breathe air in, rather he blew air out thereby sounding the alarm until his very last breath. I knew that the father was showing me a picture of Ezekiel 33 verses 1 through 6 where it says again the word of Yahuwah came to me saying, Son of Adam, speak to the children of your people and say unto them, When I bring a sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchmen, if when he sees the sword come upon the land, he blow the shofar and warn the people, then whosoever hears the sound of the shofar and takes not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be on his own head. He heard the sound of the shofar and took not warning, his blood shall be upon him. But he that takes warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the shofar, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. It's a very stern warning to people who have been appointed to be watchmen or watchwomen in my case, that we share um, what the Father is showing us in terms of warning the people. Um, along those lines, a few days later, I guess it was a yeah, December 22nd. Uh, I dreamt that it was the end of a term or a semester um, or school year, and each student was to take their turn at the podium and make a statement regarding something of significance in world politics. The designated time allotted for this event was one hour from 11 to 12. So each student would only have a few minutes to speak. I thought maybe I should speak about Mahmoud Abbas but realized I don't actually know that much about him and I should probably speak on a topic that I do know well. It hit me that I should read from one of my video transcripts and immediately I knew that my statement would be the transcript from the prophetic word I received on July 23rd, 2013, titled, Woe to you, O house of Israel, a message to the Christian church in America. Well, that reminded me of a dream that I had um, on July 23rd, same day, but um, this was three years later, so this was um, in 2016, where I was at the beach with two men and a voice from above, uh, I don't know what that was, maybe the voice of the Father, was calling out the height of each incoming wave so that we would know how long to hold our breath. The voice called out a three-mile wave and said that we'd have to hold our breath for two minutes. I looked up and could barely see the top of the wave. It was so high. The voice instructed us to divide into teams of two. Since there were three of us, and I knew I wouldn't be able to hold my breath long enough, I bowed out and let the other two men team up together. I quickly opened a sliding glass door to a house that was now filling with water, and I braced myself for impact. The wave slammed into the house, but amazingly, the door held and I was unharmed. So I've mentioned in previous videos that July 23rd is a significant date for me personally. It's my grandmother's birthday. It's the day that my husband's two brothers were both killed. Um, it's the day our son was married. Uh, our friend Lori died on July 23rd. And of course, it's the day that I received the word, woe to you, house of Israel. So um, I'm going to link to that video in the description box if you haven't seen it, 
The audio on that particular video, as I recall, is not good. Um, and so if you would like a transcript, you can email me at notstreamwoman at yahoo.com. So because the dream of December 22nd was about making a statement and it was um, had to be of significance um, regarding world politics, I'm going to go ahead and share some of the more political things that I've been um, shown uh, in the last few years. So starting with November 20th, 2015, I had two dreams that night about the umbilical cord being wrapped around a baby's neck at birth, you know, thereby strangling them. And then later that same night, I dreamt about a bear that was eating a baby. And so the fact that I had that first dream twice alerted my attention to the fact that, you know, this was significant. And because bears, um, oftentimes in dreams, at least with me, signify Russia, um, I'm wondering if father is saying, you know, something about Russia, perhaps de devouring another nation or strangling it just at or before its birth. Um, so I, I am going to allow comments um, by approval only. So please, if you have ideas um, or if the father gives you definite interpretation, feel free to share that. So on November 20th, that same night, 2015, I dreamt about a ship named Charlotte that was being sent somewhere instead of a warship. So at the time when I looked this up, you know, I discovered that the name Charlotte means free man. And there was a ship named Charlotte built in 1784 that initially carried convicts, meaning the opposite of free men. Um, and that ship was actually featured in the movie National Treasure. Now today, when I looked up um, a, a ship named Charlotte, what came up was this. So the interesting thing about waiting to share some of these things is that the father's timing is perfect, obviously, but here now we're seeing a Russian ship that was 100 miles off the coast of Charlotte, North Carolina, and it's this Russian spy ship. On December 20th of 2017, I dreamt that I was inside a public building like a forest service center, and I looked at the window to see a bear going into a cave. Then I saw another bear of a different color that seemed to be working together with the first bear as though they were helping each other or cooperating on a task, kind of like how when beavers will work together to build a dam. Then I saw a giant panda bear join them in their endeavor. The scene changed at that point and now I was standing by the fence that was dividing the area where the visitors, you know, the people that were watching, where they were from the area where the animals were, kind of, you know, like a, a zoo or, or a national park. Well, for some reason, I was standing on the side where the animals were. Um, so, and this fence, it was just, it was nothing more than like a, a split rail fence about four feet high, not exactly a, a you know, strong barrier. I saw movement over my left shoulder and was startled to discover a black panda with a cub. Now, when I say black panda, it's because the panda was mostly black, um, maybe with white markings versus most pandas are predominantly white with black markings. Anyway, so in the dream, I, it was a like a dark black panda. Um, anyway, so when I first saw it, I started to greet it like you would you know, like if a, if a friendly dog were approaching you, you know, because thinking that, well, pandas are so cute, you know, they must be harmless. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, hello. And as I did that, I quickly realized, no, 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 this panda meant to harm me. And, um, and now I'm trying to think, I'm going to have to like jump over this fence that I'm standing next to. And I'm like, you know, five feet, nothing. So I'm trying to think, oh my gosh, think quick, how are you going to, going to do this? And before I could move, this panda took my left leg in its um, mouth and it started to bite down. And at that point in the dream, I started, you know, praying in the spirit and then I woke up, you know, my heart pounding. So it's been suggested to me that the first two bears I saw, one was black and one was brown, um, could represent Russia and Iran. 
Um, I think it's obvious that the panda bear represents China. And, you know, many Americans think China is our friend because they're our trading partner. The fact that this dark panda bear, you know, was more black than white and attacked me would indicate that they are not our friend, um, that they're working in cooperation with our enemies. And I don't know if I represent America in the dream or if I represent Christians, uh, believers in the dream, um, or both. Uh, but anyway, so that was interesting. And and, and then um, a couple of days ago, it was um, the the image that came up on the on Bing, uh, which is like Google, uh, was of a panda. It was National Panda Day, apparently. So that kind of was another thing to prompt me, like, okay, Penny, you need to put these out there. Okay, so um, on January 21st of 2017, so this was the day after um, Donald Trump's inauguration, I had a dream about him. And I don't remember the dream, but I woke to the words, we're all Ruskies now. So Ruskies is a, I don't think it's a derogatory term. I think it's just a slang term um, to describe Russian people. Um, so this makes me wonder if somehow Donald Trump's presidency will eventually lead America um, it, into being um, taken over by the Russians. There's certainly been a lot of prophetic voices over the years that have seen that. So, and based on something else I'm going to share a little later in the video, you know, this could definitely be prophetic. We're all Ruskies now. On November 16th of 2016, um, I saw a man receiving a suitcase containing undergarments, and uh, he was instructed to put these on under his clothes. It was all one piece, kind of like footy pajamas, but it reminded me of a prison jumpsuit. He held it up and called it a gangster unit. The interesting thing is that this, the context of this dream, that I, I, just, I just knew it, I, I don't know how I knew it, but um, the, he, it was set in Aleppo, uh, and uh, I, at first I thought Aleppo was in Iran or Iraq, but it, it's in Syria. Uh, and um, there's another prophetic voice out there, um, Aaron, who goes by Sparrow, uh, and she's been shown also some things about Aleppo. Uh, so anyway, so I'm wondering if this dream is about a unit of gangsters, since he called it a gangster unit, uh, in Aleppo doing something undercover or covering something up, since um, these were, you know, undergarments that he was supposed to put under his clothes. So um, I'd be interested in your comments on that one. On April 15th of 2017, I dreamt that I was on a bridge and received a phone call from Barbara Bush. She wanted me to meet her at the Dallas Fort Worth Hotel because she had something important to tell me. So I was assuming that my trip would be paid for by her since she was inviting me to come. She asked me if I had some program like, you know, FaceTime uh, so that we could talk face to face about this. And I said, I, I only have Skype. So she asked me to call her cell phone when I was ready to Skype and she'd give me more information about, you know, how I was supposed to meet her in Dallas. So at that point, um, I said, okay, so uh, it was raining really hard. Uh, and I, I looked down from the bridge that I was standing on to see the back door of our house was open and our house was starting to flood. So I ran down to the, the front door of our property and I went in to warn my sister. There must have been like a, a mud room or something on the back side of the house because uh, it was containing most of the water. Uh, and because uh, the back door that I saw on the inside of the house, um, the water was coming in um, under and around it. And my sister was trying to stop it with towels. Of course, they were instantly soaked. Um, and man, I, I have had so many dreams about water. Um, anyway, my sister didn't quite seem to understand how dire the situation was. So I asked her to follow me outside so that she could gain some perspective. And so I took her back up to the, the bridge. And as we were crossing the bridge, so I could show her, like, here, this is what the water level is in the backyard, because the bridge is, like, here, and then you look down to the house. And this is not in real life. I mean, I've never been to this house before. 
Um, anyway, so uh, in the process of doing all of this, I realized Barbara Bush is waiting for me to call her back um, so that, you know, to let her know when we could Skype. And now I'm going to have to explain that I've been delayed by this flood. So I don't understand that why I'm having kind of like this dream within a dream or why I'm sidelined from the whole Barbara Bush thing by the flood um, and the rain. But um, upon waking, I remember feeling that Barbara had some insight into my dreams that she wanted to share with me, um, perhaps about the, the JFK um, dream that I had. And, you know, because the Bushes are from Texas, um, JFK was assassinated in Dallas. Um, so, uh, okay, so on December 7th of 2017, and I think it's interesting that I was shown this on December 7th, because that's the anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor, which led to the beginning of us Americans getting into World War II. Okay, so in this dream, I was with a friend. We were watching live coverage of Donald Trump's airplane landing. Um, like, um, I saw the back of the plane. Um, so he's, he's returning from some sort of a, a, a trip, like a, I don't know, overseas trip, it seemed to me in the dream. But, um, but it wasn't Air Force One. It was more the size of a, like a Learjet. And as I watched, I realized something was very wrong and said, that's not how you land a plane. Um, because it looked to me as though the pilot was intentionally putting the plane into a stall uh, and, instead of landing. And then it, uh, it crashed to the ground and exploded on impact, killing everybody on board. So the scene changed at that point, and I was now standing in front of a window um, that had uh, multiple TV screens, simultaneously all airing um, news media coverage about the plane crash. So it's just showing, you know, CNN and Fox and ABC and whatever, like all these different screens. And the interesting thing was that all of them were saying that today, meaning the day that that happened, was Tragic Tuesday. That was how they were identifying the day. And I had the sense that um, President Trump's plane going down wasn't the only tragic event of the day. So, uh, so that was December 7th. So December 29th. A couple of weeks later, I dreamt that I was at a McDonald's where a large group of young people in wheelchairs were eating like they were on a field trip and a terrorist walked in and shot and killed 70 of the 78 students. Now, I don't think you could get 78 students in wheelchairs <laughs> inside of a McDonald's, but, I, but those numbers must be significant for some reason because they were very specific. Um, and in this dream, the news media was pointing out that this terrorist attack happened on 2-11, akin to 9-11. So I looked to see um, when the next time 2-11, February 11th, falls on a Tuesday, and it's in the year 2020, so two years from now. So if the father was giving me a hint about tragic Tuesday, um, that could be a hint. Typically when I, you know, apply my own logic to these things, I'm wrong. <laughs> so hopefully I'm wrong. So I'm going to end with this last dream that I had on December 12th, 2015, so several years ago. I dreamt that I was in a downtown area with a group of people. Uh, we were all in a car. I was in the front passenger seat. We were sitting at an intersection waiting for the light to turn. And um, I understood that the Pope was being baptized that day, and I had the sense that it was the first day of the month. Now, the first day of the month on the Gregorian calendar, the Hebrew calendar, I couldn't tell you. So at the exact moment that the Pope was baptized, all of the gas stations automatically reverted to $1.88 a gallon, and I knew it was a signal from the Illuminati announcing something. And I said, we have to get off the street. So the driver of the car pulled into the corner gas station. We got out of the car. We got on our knees and we started praying. And we said, we're going to need to hear your voice now more than ever. 
please open our ears. And just then my right ear popped, like, you know, like when you're going up on an elevator. Um, and um, before I tell you that the scene change, I'm going to tell you the rest in a second here. But first, I want to show you a couple of things that I, when I typed in, you know, baptizing the Pope, this is what came up. And when I typed in a uh, dollar eighty eight per gallon, this is what came up. So there's some sort of a connection between the Pope, um, baptizing the aliens, um, and Obama. I'll let you draw your own conclusions. Okay, so. Now, in the same dream, it's not like I woke up and went back to sleep, but the scene changed. And now I was in a room full of teenagers. And I asked them, if you knew Yahusha was coming back in two years, write down the five things you would do before then. As we went around the room to share what each person had written, I called on the first teenager, who was a boy, and he was too embarrassed to share what he'd written. And so um, I went to the next teenager and she was a girl and she said well the second thing I do is ask forgiveness for the first thing on the list so I believe that the father was showing me this because you know so if you knew you only had you know till whatever date in whatever year how would you conduct yourself would you do things differently would you live a more righteous life or would you, you know, find a partner for the end of the world, as some of those movies um, suggest, like, well, it's all going to end anyway. Let's, um, you know, go out and behave as badly as we possibly can. And then, like, this teenage girl, you know, her thinking, and then we'll ask for forgiveness. Father is not telling us all of these things to scare us, but to warn us that trouble is coming. And the whole point of us being warned is for us to live a righteous life, not to, you know, think, well, I've got this much more time to, to live my life however I want to, because um, there's always going to be forgiveness for me. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to end with that and um, welcome your comments. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Ka'olam. Blessed are you, our Lord God, King of the universe. Amen.